Mabu, hi, this is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. More Bible verses um, to hopefully encourage you to uh, wait and look for a wife to not give up. Psalm 84, 11 and 12. These are some of my favorites. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Get this. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. There's the key, O Lord of hosts. Blessed is the man that trusts in you so we have to walk uprightly be obedient to god what you know we can't just live our own way and expect him to bless us we have to walk uprightly and we trust in him if we trust in him we'll walk uprightly because we know his ways are best and he can give us that wife and we want that wife and we keep, keep praying for that wife you know until we have that wife um that one's a little bit different context um, Psalm 145, 18 and 19, the Lord is near, again, to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves and delivers them. Proverbs 10, 24, what the wicked dreads will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted my desire for a wife has been granted. My amazing eyes is better than I could have imagined when I married her. But yet I kind of dreaded being alone the rest of my life. Well, that fortunately didn't happen. Praise to God for that. Proverbs 133. Proverbs 133. But whosoever hearkens or listens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Just another verse I pointed out there um, to listen to God and, and to try not to worry. Um, Psalm seventy-two, twelve: For he, God, will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also, and him who has no helper. I certainly felt helpless. And of course, I was going to keep going to God for his deliverance and salvation because that's the only place it comes. Uh, Psalm sixty-eight, nineteen: Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us, loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation or deliverance. So the point there, don't forget to notice all that God has done daily, not just once in a while when I happen to be aware of it. Daily, God loads us with benefits, many, many things to be thankful for. Um, Psalm 118, verse 24, this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because God has given us so many benefits um, let's pick out another one here um well there's second chronicles 38 and 9 i was talking about not being stiff-necked and returning to the lord um so that the lord your god is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you if you return to him so that was just kind of you know i wrote that down and when, when you feel like maybe we've temporarily turned away from god god always welcomes us back into the fold and um, we just have to ask him, you know, back to come back into his in his good graces and to, to follow him, to forgive us. Um, Psalm 37, verses 4 and 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Not just do whatever we want. Do good. That conduct matters when asking for things. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord. Get this. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. So much here. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Is that saying what it sounds like it is? Psalm 37, 3, 4, and 5. You've got to trust him. Persevere. Do good. Don't waste your time. You know, serve him. Be involved with the things he wants you to be involved with. Delight yourself in the Lord. I'm trying to... You know, getting involved with church work and it's so distracting because I'm single, but I always wanted to keep doing what I thought he wanted me to do. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, some say, well, he'll just give you things to desire. But what good is that if he doesn't fulfill them? The Bible also says right there, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. There you go. Matthew six thirty three. but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He was talking about material things, but not limited to material things. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that perspective. Matthew seven eleven. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? 
he knows what we need, of course. Um, that's just another one that came to my mind. I think it's Matthew 6, 8 or something. God knows what we need before we ask him. You might say, well, then why ask him if he knows what we need before we ask him? Because he wants us to. He wants us to know to rely on him. And that's where the deliverance comes from. And keep asking for direction so we can get what's important to us. And just a couple more here. These are good ones. Romans 8.32. Love me on the sea is about... You know, my experience finding my wife after many years of being alone, but I also want to be helping people with what I've learned so they can stay married. There's nothing better than being married for almost all people um, that are healthy anyway. Um, you know, I mean, there's some people who just are not well enough to be married, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a general calling. Most people are called to be married. Few are called to live the harsh life of celibacy. To those that are called to that, it's not harsh. They just don't want to be married, don't need to be married, don't need to have intercourse. That is important. You'll see that throughout the videos if you watch all my videos. Romans 8.32 He that spared not his own son, that's God the Father, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That's pretty important. He spared his, not his only son. He poured out his wrath on him for sinners so they could be, have everlasting life. Um, a very selfless act of love. He gave up the best he had, God himself, his own perfect son from all eternity. And he delivered him up, uh, pouring out his wrath of eternal damnation why would he do that? Love? Love? Now, if he delivered his son up, who did no wrong and was perfect, uh, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? What's a wife if he's given you uh, eternal damnation? He paid, paid for your eternal damnation by pouring it out on his son. What's a wife? What's anything else after he's given you that? Um, amazing. Just, it's, something you have to meditate on it puts it in perspective and here's probably my all-time favorite to wrap it up here ephesians 3 20 now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us this is the god we pray to to meet our needs whether it's daily bread for the day and uh, or or a job or or you know, healing if it's his will or anything now to him who is able to do not just enough or get by or or maybe he'll struggle to provide something no to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or even think or imagine according to the power that works in us so anything we need God can give us. So we should relentlessly pray, seek, wait on God. Don't give up. Don't grumble. Don't complain. And, um, and if you're looking for a wife in another country, then you do these things. If you're a Christian, you want to rely on God. Things don't look so good right now. But if you do this, one day you may also be able to find love beyond the sea.